everyone. It's so good to see you and to gather this day uh, for worship here at Washington Street United Methodist Church. I call this our new sacred outdoor space because we have filled it with the joy of worship and praise for these Sundays during this time of uh, unprecedented pandemic. Uh, as we gather today, I want to remind you all that we are celebrating Holy Communion. If you did not bring elements from home, we do have elements available on the table at the back where you should also sign in. And if we run out of those, we have plenty more available and we'll just need to, I will be watching those to make sure we have them. And you can secure those at any time by walking over there and picking one up or by raising your hand and one of the ushers will bring them to you. As we gather today, I want to make you aware that we do have on our table here to the left, our stewardship pledge campaign is going on full force and we have a place for you to uh, place your pledge card if you have it ready or and to pick up your I'm committed button and your special treat. We also have available today our Lenten devotions. The first, uh, first, uh, first day of Lent is Ash Wednesday. February the 17th, and so we want you to be sure you have your uh, Lenten devotions in time to begin that practice of daily devotion together. I truly am thankful that you are here and that God is blessing us with this beautiful weather, albeit a little windy, but let's give God thanks and praise for the joy of gathering this day in the name of Christ our Lord. Let us worship the Lord. glad you are here with us if you need a chair please let us know we can get you one and now if you would join me in the opening prayer found printed in your worship God oh God in mystery and silence you are present in our lives bringing new life out of destruction hope out of despair growth out of difficulty we thank you that you do not leave us alone, but labor to make us whole. Help us to perceive your unseen hand in the unfolding of our lives and to attend to the gentle guidance of your spirit that we may know the joy you give your people. Amen. The Old Testament lesson this afternoon comes from the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter verses 21 through 31. Hear now the word of the Lord. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretch out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth 
when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God does not grow faint nor, or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Here ends this reading of God's word. Thanks be to God. So in case you're in your vehicle and want to be sure you're hearing, the FM station is 88.9. 88.9. I have it written down, so 88.9. The opening verses of the 40th chapter of Isaiah are the words of comfort that we hear immortalized in Handel's Messiah, beginning with those words, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. What follows is a declaration of forgiveness and a promise that God will make a way for the people of the exile to return to the promised land. But as Kristen J. Winland wrote, this audience of God is a tired and weary people who have likely had some trouble imagining a new future. As I read those words, I thought about the roller coaster of emotions we have all experienced over the last 11 months. There have been highs and lows, but all of us have experienced those moments when we felt like our souls were in the basement of despair. I was listening to the radio yesterday and I heard an instrumental rendition of Edelweiss. The tears came as I thought of Christopher Plummer and I recognized immediately that those tears were a mourning for all we have lost in this last year. Our deep sense of isolation has sometimes made us feel as if we were not truly community. We've all had that experience and pain of losing loved ones or people in our faith community for whom we cannot mourn as we would so desire. And we have all had those expressed and unexpressed anxieties about the future. We find ourselves now wondering, when will the vaccines be effective enough to lower the infection rate? We wonder how soon we will be able to resume a more normal life, like in-person education, over which we have long debated, and when we can return to in-person worship safely inside. Now, I don't know about you, but I miss the little things, even things I don't necessarily like to do, like shopping. I am not a shopper, but somehow the thought of just going into a mall or walking through an outdoor uh, store front, it just sounds like the most intriguing thing to do. I think it has something to do with the illusion of freedom that doing something like that really gives us. I want to go into a restaurant and sit down and have dinner. 
I want to have a family dinner with my brothers and their children and their grandchildren. You know, the thing we planned to do last Easter, then last July, thought about doing on New Year's Day, but no, not yet. And yes, I yearn to return to worship in our sacred interior spaces. The people Isaiah addressed were in a deep well of despair that had been going on for decades. For decades they had been living on foreign soil without the comfort of their temple, without their homeland which they knew to be the promised land, and they had very little hope of return. When Isaiah addressed their despair, I think in those beautiful words that we heard today, he called them to affirm their faith. Now some writers think differently. They think that he was addressing their spiritual amnesia, in some way scolding them for their failure to remember the goodness of God and how God had long been at work in their lives and in the history of their people. I think, however, that he was calling them to affirm their faith, not in the voice of the prophet, but in the voice of a pastor who had grappled with that same despair and been with them in the base basement. He called them to hold fast to their faith in God, to trust in God, and to firmly place their hope in the God of the creation, the Exodus, and the promise. Today I want to invite you to affirm your faith in the God of the Incarnation, the God of the cross and the resurrection, and the God of the open table. There surely are moments when every believer experiences deep isolation from God. The great mystics refer to it as the dark night of the soul. Yet as Christians, we affirm our faith in the God who comes to us, whoever we are, wherever we are. We make that affirmation because of our faith in Jesus. John wrote, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. That is an affirmation that the same God who created all that is seen and unseen came to us in Jesus. That is not a God who is going to leave us in the basement of despair. This is a God who comes to us in our deepest need. And we have seen this God at work in our midst. I think of the desolation of this pandemic and I have to give thanks. I have to give thanks for the technology that the pandemic over 100 years ago, they didn't have. The technology we have has allowed us to stay connected virtually with family, with friends, even in our worshiping community, in our Sunday school classes. But I'm also thankful that God has given us the science that we have had. These scientists were able to identify this virus quickly. They were able to develop easy methods for us to manage this pandemic. Things we could do, face masks, social distancing, and as difficult as the lockdowns were, they were effective in slowing this deadly virus. Yes, it has wreaked havoc, but where might we have been if not for this God who comes to us and expands our capacity for connection and grants us knowledge of the intricacies of this beautiful creation. I believe in the God of the Incarnation. Say it with me. I believe in the God of the Incarnation. 
Yes, there are moments in life's journey when we are overwhelmed by suffering. And we wonder, where is this God of power hiding? That's pretty much how those exiles felt. They wondered where God had been and what God was doing and how a loving God could have left them to their own destruction and to the destruction of foreign powers. As Christians, we need only look at the cross. The God who came to us in Jesus did not turn away from suffering, from despair, from betrayal, isolation, or fear. The God who came to us in Jesus confronted the forces of evil, experienced the realities of human suffering, and died a real death. Jesus became truly human, and therefore we know that God has not turned away from us in this time, but is fully engaging this pandemic with us. Isaiah told his people, God does not faint or grow weary. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. As we have lived into this pandemic, we have supported food banks, we have continued to feed those experiencing food insecurity. We have supplied food for backpack programs at Alcor Middle School. Just go to our website and look at our video under social media, Ways We Serve. It's amazing. We have given aid to our neighbors near and far. And in so doing, we affirm our faith in the cross and in the resurrection. We affirm what we believe, that there is no power greater than God's power. As in our opening prayer, God brings new life out of destruction, hope out of despair, growth out of difficulty, and gives life beyond death. Today we affirm our faith in the God of the Incarnation and the God of the Cross and the Resurrection. Say it with me. I believe in the God of the Incarnation and in the God of the Cross and the Resurrection. Today we affirm our faith in the God of the Open Table. God does not come to one of us or to some of us. God comes to all of us. God comes to us in Christ so that we might all sit at God's table. That's why Jesus came among us and sat at the table with sinners. That's why we saw Jesus healing the slaves, the women, not just people of power and authority. That's why we saw Jesus welcoming the children and even the Gentiles. Our God is the God of the open table who invites us to the great feast of the family of God. God invites us like a loving parent to draw near to sit close, close enough for God to embrace us in love and in comfort. God invites us to come and to feast at the table where God will indeed renew our strength. Isaiah said, we shall mount up with wings like eagles. We shall run and not be weary. We shall walk and not faint. As Christians, we believe all of that is true because God will feed us the bread of life. Today we affirm our faith 
and the God of the Incarnation, the God of the cross and the resurrection, and the God of the open table. We affirm that our faith, our trust, and our hope rest in God alone. Amen and Amen. us to come to this table, to the table that is open to all. We come acknowledging that we need the grace of God, knowing that we are indeed sinners redeemed by the grace of our Lord. And so we come ready to make our confession. Let us pray to the Lord together. God, you are everlasting the creator of all that is. Your understanding is beyond measure. We confess to you that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. In your compassion, forgive us, for we place our hope in your steadfast love. Praise the Lord. Our God heals the brokenhearted and binds up our wounds. God takes pleasure in those who place their trust in God's grace. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is a right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, Father Almighty. Um, that, sorry, I lost that. Blessed are you, our Alpha and Omega, whose strong and loving arms encompass the universe. For with your eternal word and Holy Spirit, you are forever one God. Through your word, you created all things and call them good. In you, we live and move and have our being. When we fell into sin, you did not desert us. You made covenant with your people Israel and spoke through prophets and teachers. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And so, with all the people on earth and all the company of heaven, we join their unend we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you. And blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus called you Abba, Father. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced the people as your own and filled them with a longing for a peace that would last and for a justice that would never fail. In Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory, and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting death, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Please take the elements that you have brought from home or that you have collected here in your hands and hold your hands over them as we pray together. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts that in the breaking of this bread and in the drinking of this wine we may know the presence of the living Christ, that we might be renewed as the body of Christ for the world and redeemed by Christ's blood. As the grain and grapes once dispersed in the fields are now united on this table in bread and wine, so may we be all your people gathered from every time and place into the unity of your eternal household and feast at your table forever. Through Jesus Christ, with Christ in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let us share in the feast together.
And now if you would join me in the prayer response. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Lift us up as if on eagles' wings so that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer Jesus taught his first disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A word that needs to witness our living affirmation in the God of the Incarnation, the God of the Cross and the Resurrection, and the God of the Open Table who welcomes all. Let us go in the peace, in the joy, and in the hope of our Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>